Hey, howdy y'all, Mr. Toptio here with a review of Apple TV's Foundation Series, Season 1, Episode 9. This one is titled, The First Crisis. Uh, and we get to see that crisis coming to a head as we're on the Invictus. It's jumped into the Terminus system. Uh, Salvor, apparently, like I project, predicted in the last episode, is somewhat less susceptible to the jump you know, jump state, having been awake the whole time. So she's conscious. She's moving around first. She discovers Lewis in the navigation uh, light ring or whatever we call it, the navigation seat. And apparently, off screen while she was fighting Farah, he had time enough to do a little bit of surgery on the back of his neck and, you know, log into the computer and and discover a way to teleport everybody to Terminus. He did all this off screen. I'm not mad at it, but I mean, that would have been an interesting thing to show uh, just from my, I mean, on top of the fact that he had already been shot. So yeah, that would really have been a, a good way to let the character go out to see on screen him doing all of the things that he, you know, he was doing with his last few moments on this mortal coil. Again, not mad at it, not trying to nitpick at it, but that's just the way it is. So she finds Lewis in the navigation seat, but she also sees that Farah and I, I forget the name of her number two, uh, but they're there, they're passed out. So she goes ahead and proceeds to tie them up. That is a choice. It is not the choice I would have made. I would have shot them in the face while they were unconscious because why leave them to be a problem later? She's, she apparently chose to capture prisoners, so be it. Uh, she just ties them up, but then she immediately, like every other Bond villain ever, leaves the room and hopes that everything's going to be okay. So be it. But she leaves, she leaves the Invictus and she goes to, uh, I believe it's the Beggar's Choice, or uh, the ship that Hugo gave to her a few episodes back, and... She, she's trying to communicate with Terminus, but eventually, uh, she finds out that the null field has, has expanded. And apparently the Lieutenant that was left behind didn't listen to Salvor's mother when she was explaining that the field is going to be expanding and they need to get away from it. Uh, apparently that never, that never came to fruition because we find everybody that's down on Terminus is being affected by the null field. Those in the city, those, uh, Anacreons and Termini alike. Uh, Salvor finds her mother closest to the vault, but she's also packing the Prime Radiant, whom Salvor then goes through some weird uh, flashback, premonition, whatever she's been suffering from, seizure, she's been suffering from over the last few episodes. She has another episode today, and she sees Gale playing with the Prime Radiant and how to activate it, how to open it up. And, you know, there's several other scenes of, of things that she sees, but eventually she unlocks the prime radiant in the presence of the vault. And it, it I, I guess, comes out of its chrysalis and fully exposes itself and says, okay, here we go. The door's open. Let's get this party started. Well, I mean, immediately after that, here comes Farah, who, as expected, woke up, untied herself, somehow snuck aboard a thespian ship, held that crew to gunpoint, killed them, slaved the ship to herself, and she comes back down, she comes down to Terminus ground level and immediately just starts a mess. Now, luckily, she doesn't, you know, start up in the death toll. She's She's really just there to show, like, put your weapons down. I'm in charge. I got all of this. I've already destroyed your, your ships, so let's do it my way. And then proceeds to start attacking the vault because, well, I guess that's what she was here for. She hates the Foundation that much, so be it. Which forces Salvor to do what she should have done at the beginning of the episode, pick up a weapon and shoot Farah in the head. Now, this one, I believe, goes through her neck. That is a distinction with very little difference to me. You watch, you shoot the devil in the face and watch the devil die. It, that's just, 
that's just how horror movies go. Apparently, Salvador hasn't seen too many horror movies. That's fine. But for me, bang, bang, you're dead. I don't have to worry about you anymore. But now she sees the consequences of her actions. I mean, but what, one of the best parts, though, is that we get Harry Seldon in, well, I guess in the flesh, or at least a hard light hologram or something, come down, and it's Jared Harris with, like, the angelic lights behind him, and he's just walking down a hill. It's like, hey, good to see that everybody's here. Let's get this party started. And you could hear, even though nobody ever said anything, you could hear the audible, what the is going on here from everybody assembled. The Thespians, the Anacreons, the Termini, all of them are like, uh, this is not good. Or is it? I don't know what the... <laughs> but anyway, I get to see Jared Harris once again own a room, uh, although this time he's standing outdoors, but he still owns the whole thing, and he's just walking down, slow pace, being himself. Like, yeah. You guys thought you were in charge, but I'm actually in charge and we're going to do it my way. Forget the Thespians trying to take over the Invictus. Forget the Anacreons trying to use the Invictus. Forget even Salvor's plan to you know, work together uh, or at least share it. No, I was like, okay, you're, you guys are all here. Let's get the plan started. And that takes care of the A plot for the episode. Then we move on to the B plot of the episode, which is essentially Brother Don and Brother Dusk having a meeting where they are now in the tapestry room and Brother Dusk is introducing, uh, you know, introducing us to the history of the genetic dynasty. Uh, all of the great moments, the end of the robot wars, as he calls it, some other rebellions popping off. And you see on the wall a few other items like, the, the, I, I guess you call it the scourging of Anacreon and, and Thespin. Uh, but to his, I mean, to his surprise, Brother Don is, is getting something put on there for himself. And it's something as trivial as the hunt in his mind. I mean, Brother Dusk is like, and quite clearly speaks these lines. Do you see the three birds that you shot here? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And Brother Don has nothing to say, but yes, I see it. And thank you for this great honor. I didn't think it was that that big of a deal well uh be careful when dealing with the empire as we saw last episode because apparently this was all brother dust needed to start the smoke machines because yeah he's like no no i'll leave you right here take your time contemplate the subtleties if you don't mind go right on ahead now to his credit brother don puts on his little uh i guess color blindness correction tabs on the side of his head sees that there are not three but six and immediately says oh no i've got to go not now but oh right now and books it and he's gone he is he is back in his room he's trying to get his bug out bag going but before he can put it all together bam my boy shadow master Obrek is like hey empire it's time to go we've got another appointment you've got to make it to which immediately causes Brother Don to crap his pants, or if not crap his pants, do something to start sweating because he comes up with a whole bunch of excuses right away. I'm indisposed. I'll meet you in a minute. Can I do it later? And Brother, and, and I'm sorry. No, Shadow Master Obrek is not here for any of that because he's coming from the guy who says, I want all the smoke anyway. And says, I've got to serve this guy. You've got to serve this guy too. So they start walking out together. They start going through the Presidium Room, which is apparently where the, all the statues of all the Cleons are, or memoriams to, to the Cleons are. Uh, Brother Don, he's even at this late date, he's still making up excuses like, oh no, I gotta go. I can't do this right now. I got 18 other places to be. None of it, not having any of it. Shadow Master Obrek just puts his hand on his back, says, keep walking, kid. Because here we go, uh, we got to get to where we're going because uh, you've been summoned and I've got to deliver you. And at this point, 
Brother Don pulls some magic on his aura and says, okay, reverse the field or whatever. Knock this guy out. And he, again, just starts booking. He is ghost. He's not even worried about the book, bug out bag. He's not worried about pitches or anything. He's on the lamb. He's gone. He goes down the irrigation system, ends up in the scar, trades his aura for a jacket. Okay. I guess it's a negotiation. He came out with something he wanted, uh, but it also helps to disguise him and keep people away from him as he's trying to get, get around town. I mean, he, as he said, he has one of the most famous faces in the entire galaxy. So whatever he can do to compliment his costume, but he gets to Azura's house. She lets him in. And then he discovers that he's gone from one trap into another trap. And it's it's crazy because Azura is apparently part of some faction that wants to just bring down Empire. They've been working on this for generations. They've got their own Simaraklum that they're going to put together. Their own little guy who's going to take over this brother Don's place and be inserted essentially into the Empire tri triumvirate and run things once brother Day gives up the, the job, I guess. Or at least that was the plan, because once again, Shadow Master Obrek is not here for any of your BS, dude. <laughs> he comes in with essentially the Imperial SWAT team who do exactly what Salvor should have done. They walk in, they they take down any any hostiles, and they say, okay, bang, bang, you're shot in the head. I don't have to worry about you anymore. So that goes down. Brother Don obviously is confused as to what's going on. But then you got Brother Dusk walking in the room and he's just out there with all the receipts. He's like, we, we captured your little bug drone. We know about this whole thing. We know about your color blindness. Everything is all nice and tidy in a nice little, nice little bow. And why would we ever want you to be a part of this anymore? It, whatever you were doing, all of you, not just, not just this group that Azura is part of, but Brother Don himself, whatever y'all had going, consider it ended. And yeah, that's what happens when you walk in and you start messing with Empire. They're here for all the smoke and they got all the receipts too. So good luck with whatever you're planning against them. They don't, I mean, they run an entire galaxy. Do you think they couldn't figure out that something was going on in their own palace? It, it boggles the mind, but again, you come for the king, you best not miss. And that's now, what, two out of the three versions of Empire that are here for all the smoke? So, and they'll forgive Brother Don for not having all of that. But again, these guys bring their own fireworks to the party. They start their own fires. They're here for all of it. And I'm here, for, I'm here to watch every moment of it. And I loved it. And once again, we get to see that you can't really do much against Empire if he really, really wants to focus on you. Because they've seen... I would imagine it all and they've done a lot if not everything but they've done more than most people think they do uh, even Azura's group thinks oh they're all in their little terrarium nobody knows what's going on outside yeah brother brother dusk here would disagree he's well aware of what's going on because again the scar was created on his watch so he knows what's going on he, he would be familiar with it because he saw his predecessor uh, just deal with it and have to have to absorb it. And apparently he's got nothing else to do but paint this mural and keep eyes on Brother Dawn while Brother Day is out. Uh, so he's got plenty of time in his schedule for a lot of espionage and snooping, apparently. Or he's just got Shadow Master Obrecht on the scene. And that will take care of quite a bit of things as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, we get to see our boy once again step out of the shadows, slit somebody's throat, leave bloody footprints and say, Empire, how's it going? You know, he's just here to serve the Empire. And, I, again, he's my favorite character in this whole show. 
and he's maybe had maybe maybe three minutes of screen time in the entire series. Doesn't matter. Anybody who can just appear and then disappear or as his as he chooses to and isn't a good guy in the main chair, you gotta watch out for to begin with. But this guy, you could tell he's just he's just here to do this. And if nothing I wonder now if they're gonna make him a robot or whatever it is, but he's just that guy and he's like, no no. Nope, not here for any BS, just here for Empire business, man. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> Dig it. So yeah, that that's the whole Empire scene of the week. And and it would be great to see, and I hope they get to it in the in season ten. Oh, I'm sorry, episode ten, uh, all three versions of the Empire getting back together. Uh we see a flash of Brother Day as he's on, I guess, his jump ship headed back into Terminus. Uh, but Brother Dawn's fate is essentially left in his hands. And Brother Dust has uh, built his case and got all the evidence. Says, oh, do you see what this guy is doing? Well, look, I already had to paint the picture. I'd hate to have to erase it all. You know how painful that can be. Let's just go ahead, wipe this guy off the map, replace him with the clones we have in the tank ready for him, and keep it keep it moving. Um It'll be interesting to see what Brother Don uses as a defense or if he can even get around these other two because as we've seen in the last two episodes, you don't step to these guys without an airtight plan and expect to make any any way out of the room that you're in. I, I, I do truly feel for Azura. I don't believe she's long for this earth either or long for this world either. Um, but that's that's the B plot wrapped up. <laughs> and yeah, I'm here for that too. <laughs> Cannot wait till next week to see how this all gets together. I believe it's the season finale. We'll see how it all closes up. With that said, I I know that the plan is to have several seasons worth of this show, but I'm now discovering on my own research. I haven't heard anything. I haven't looked on the internet or any social media. But I'm a bit worried when I look at Apple TV, you know, it's, it's like the TikTok. Apple TV, show me that you're not supporting this show without telling me that you're not supporting this show. Like I said, I haven't seen anything in the news. I haven't seen anything on social media, but it is a bit disturbing that Foundation is not on the top five, not in the top banner. I, I, would, I would only ask that whoever whoever's watching this, just please let somebody know about this show, get people watching this show. If for nothing else, then maybe we could pull an expanse if they decide to cancel it and say, you know what, well, let's get it on some other platform. Maybe this platform just doesn't have, have the, the wherewithal to get it done. I can imagine this show is quite expensive. I imagine there's not a lot of opportunities to, to build the audience that is watching it, but this, this is, you, you guys should have known that going in, that the Foundation series let alone any of the books that you want to talk about, is going to be difficult to do. Um, I mean, but it's it's one of the great books in science, it's, I'm sorry, one of the great book series in science fiction. It's the literally the foundation for a lot of other science fiction out there. Uh, I mean, you, you probably want to give this as much time as you can to let it grow as big as it can. Can I guarantee that it's going to be like Game of Thrones? Can I guarantee it's going to be like Breaking Bad or any of the other great shows that, you know, other platforms and other channels have been able to build? No, but can I, can I tell you that the story's worth it? Oh yeah, I can, I, I can prove, that's proven. You don't have to worry about my opinion. You guys should keep supporting this show. And again, we need to get more fans, more eyes watching this. So this becomes a lot more prominent. Uh, on this and now I may just be worried that the sky is falling that may be me entirely I'll I'll agree to that but man I'm I'm not liking the outlook as I see it right now I mean it's it's a bit buried to find the show 
And that shouldn't be the case for something with a story this good, this juicy. And I don't know. You let me know down below in the comments if you think that Apple's trying to hide the show or if, you, if you've heard anything that they're, they're thinking about canceling it or if they've even renewed season two. Again, that was the plan according to, I believe, David Goyer. He wanted to do eight seasons. I don't know. I'd like to be wrong. I really, really would like to be wrong in this case. But again, uh, go ahead, leave your comments down below, like, subscribe, hit the content no notification bell. So when it comes to the trial of Brother Dawn, I'm really, really here to see what Brother Day and Brother Dusk get together, uh, what evidence and what, what, it, what they're willing to hear, uh, and more importantly, how they're gonna adjudicate that whole deal. But as for me, forward the foundation.